I'm thrilled to be joined by actress Sheila Maneva as part of Kiss's celebration of women in film in collaboration with F-Rated. Sheila has worked in film, theatre and television, as well as voicing an animated character for Disney's Kazazi Moto, a collection of short films from Africa. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us, Sheila. Thank you so much for having me, Cassie. I'm very excited to do this. Great. Perfect. So let's let's dive right in. Let's start with uh, Rafiki. Um, so before we talk about the film in more detail, which we, we definitely will, because I loved it, um, but can you tell us how you came to be part of the project? Yeah, sure, I can tell you. Um, so let me just start. A funny thing about the industry here in Kenya, we don't have sort of all the right structures that they have, say, in Hollywood and in the UK and in other countries. Mm. Here, most actors represent themselves. We don't have managers. We don't have agents. We are sort of our own representatives. Mm. So a casting call was put out um, in early 2017. And being that I self-represent, I responded to the casting call. And then once that was done, we were shortlisted mm. and I was called in for the first round of auditions. So I remember going in and and doing the auditions and then when I walked into the room I saw Wanuri in the room and I knew that this was a Wanuri film and yeah. I had been dying to work with her I'd been dying to work with her so I was I was so excited but I had to curb it down and perform the slides that they had given me and then I was fortunate enough to be called for a second round of auditions which I went for mm -hmm. and I think I I did brilliantly <laughs> <laughs> obviously because <laughs> you got the role Yes, I did. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So, so was that your first kind of venture into acting or had you done other roles before? Um, it was my first official venture into acting. So myself, I have almost uh, like a decade of experience in the background, behind the scenes. So I've been training as a director, producer and writer. And so I did a lot of work in advertising. Um, okay. And um, yeah, but then now you, you'd find that sometimes when we're on set advertising, it's sometimes you, you're almost like shooting short films to be able to tell stories of the brands that you're representing. And so I would remember like at times we'd get on set and maybe an actor does and show up and mm. I'd step in to replace them or maybe someone comes and they're not really performing their role how they're supposed to I would step in and every time I would do that there'd just be this whole resounding like oh my god you're so good you should consider doing this officially yeah. and so in 2017 I made my new year's resolutions and I was like this year I'm gonna audition and I'm gonna go for roles and at the end of that month at the end of January is when the audition for Rafiki came in and I tried and I got it. So yeah, it was wow. like my first official, but I'm not new to the industry. I've been mm. working behind the scenes. Wow, you must have been like really manifesting that for your New Year's resolution for it to happen in like two months. <laughs> yeah, nice. I think yeah. so. And I think the stars were aligned. I, I, I was yeah. just so lucky. So yeah, my manifestation did work. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously it must have been useful to have all your, your background directing knowledge to bringing into the acting. Absolutely. It definitely was a, a huge added advantage because I'm, a, I'm able to connect the pieces very quickly and pick direction as well very quickly. So yeah. it was it was quite a breath of fresh air. I really enjoyed. Yeah, amazing. So so for our audience that's not seen Rafiki, could you give a little quick overview about what the film's about? Well, Rafiki is a love story between these two young, beautiful girls who have come of age. And basically, um, the girls develop a beautiful relationship, but it's so polarizing because they come from a country where, um, you know, people are very homophobic and it's also not safe and it's not um, like a nice environment for them. But you see how much their love shines and how beautiful they decide to show their affection and how much it affects the community and the people around them yeah. and it's it's a it's a Romeo and Juliet style type of film because the two girls come from fathers who are political rivals mm -hmm. and here they are falling in love in a very conservative country and what that really does to their relationship and what testament yeah. it says about love and the Kenyan community 
Yeah, amazing, amazing. So um, obviously there's yourself um, and as you said, the other kind of lead female character. It's a female director that you mentioned you were really excited to work with. So it's like a really female heavy cast. Um, I know from speaking to, to other people um, in the film industry that that's probably a bit of a rarity. Usually, you know, it's it's a male director, it's a male producer. So so I guess um, kind of how did it feel to to come into that space and be around so many creative women? It was it was such a wonderful experience. Um, but you know something about the Kenyan film industry is a lot of the producers are women. A lot of the people who champion stories, documentaries, films, and TV series are women. But then now you find when you get on set and we're in production, then the dynamic sort of changes and we have a very male heavy um, crew and, and cast as well sometimes. So this was so, it was such a wonderful bubble that Wanuri created for us because everywhere you look around, you see women and you see yourself represented and not just in the artistic departments like makeup and wardrobe, but some of the technical ones like lighting, you know, grips and and um, and uh, camera as well. So it was it was so empowering. One because you know you're making such an important film and a film that um, a story that needs to be told. But then to also be surrounded by women who are just killing it at at um, the, every department and seeing them showing up, it really just gives you. It, it, it gives you like fire inside of you and 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 a sense of sisterhood and community and belonging. So I'm eternally grateful to Wanuri for giving me and Samantha that experience. Um, she even got us an acting coach, a lady as well, Elizabeth. And for a love story, and we're two people who would never met before, we had no relationship prior to this, the tenderness that women have, the gentleness and the openness that as women we naturally have, really enabled us to get into our characters and to be able to tell these stories. And I think also just Wanuri being a woman, the girls were not overly sexualized in the film. You know, we were dressed like, I was very cutesy. I had like a fantastic style, but it was very modest. It was still stylish. She wasn't overly sexualized. And I think that also female gaze and that female perspective is really also what helped the film to be so tender and so just so beautiful and so colorful. So yeah. that was an experience I forever take with me. Amazing. Yeah, I am. Um, I did love your clothes and your hair in the film. It was, yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. really cool, very colourful. Um, okay, perfect. So let's, um, I guess, talk a little bit about how the film was received. So it was the first Kenyan mm -hmm. film to premiere at Cannes, which is amazing, obviously, but then it was also banned in Kenya itself for promoting kind of homosexuality. So it must have been, I guess, you know, a really, bit, like, <laughs> a very difficult time, a lot of conflicting emotions for you. It, it really was Cassie. I think it was it was so surreal because on one hand we are having conversations with Amnesty International and embassies about safe houses that we can go to, you know, protocols in case you know one of us gets attacked. And then on the other hand, we are flying, we're in Cannes, having such a glorious, beautiful experience where we are being celebrated and and we're looking absolutely gorgeous and we're walking the red carpets and meeting all these stars who are in in awe of our film and in awe of our bravery for telling the story. And so you, you go to bed with such conflicting feelings because you also want to be accepted at home and you want to be celebrated at home and to be loved at home and for people to see the beauty that you've created. Mm. Um, but there is the realities of what um, you know our country is and, 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 and what was even being said about the film. Yeah. So it was so surreal being just you know your ambassadors of your country and in your own country no one really wants to celebrate what you've done but I will say though um, because we were nominated for the Oscars and for you to be part of the Oscars your film needs to have shown in your home country for seven days um, the High Court of Kenya ruled in our favor and so the film was able to be showcased for the seven days and I was the only one in the country at that time and I attended some of the screenings and let me tell you I really saw the spirit of Kenyan people people came they showed out they watched um, queer people came feeling wonderful, so represented. They came with their families, their parents, 
and telling them like, this is me, this is who I am. And this is kind of like my story. Mm -hmm. So to also see that, you know, I would have a parent coming to, uh, one of the parents told me, yeah, you know, I've watched the film. It, it was very, very nice. But um, this thing about gays, I still don't understand it. But let let me support my daughter, you know. <laughs> so it, it, it was just incredible for me to witness that. Yeah. Um, yeah, considering everything that was being said about us in, in the public with the officials, mm -hmm. I think Kenyans really showed us what also they truly felt about the film and it was amazing. And I haven't faced any backlash, you know, I haven't gone through anything. Nobody has ever stopped me. Nobody has ever attacked me. It's just been love and love and love all through. And I still get to work in this industry. Yeah. So yeah, amazing. Oh, that's, yeah, that's so nice to hear. It must've been so like moving to be able to see that actually happening like in the cinema and around you. Um, so yeah, so obviously it's a shame that it, yeah, that it's not kind of still shown there, but it's really lovely that that got to take place. Um, so if we look at now at uh, some of the other projects that you've worked on, so uh, you played Anna in uh, Kenya's first uh, homegrown Netflix series, Country Queen, uh, which I haven't finished yet, so no spoilers, <laughs> but I'm, I'm like halfway through and I'm loving it. Um, so obviously now Netflix has a hub in Nairobi, um, so more kind of content's created there. Um, so do you think that TV kind of provides greater access to to more diverse talent um, and kind of more stories than perhaps film is able to? Uh, yeah, you know what? I feel like <laughs> that's a double-edged sword, right? I think with TV, because it's such a long-form piece, you have a lot more time to create deeper storylines for your characters, you know, the story acts, and you can delve deeper into why the characters are the way they are. Mm -hmm. And so that gives for, you know, more nuanced performances and the audience gets to interact with your character a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, you know, when you think about film, a lot of the accolades that are given with pieces of art actually happen in film. So you find films are more celebrated than TV series are. So if you think about access, if you think about us being able to tell our stories, mm -hmm. it's like you kind of have to make a film, you know, to receive yeah. the accolade for people to know who you are, and then you get into TV. But I think um, regardless of where you are, there's, there's you know, there's pros and cons for each side. And so it just depends with you. It depends what's, on what's getting you excited and your team around you, you know, your distribution and all of that. So that that one, it's a, it's a double-edged sword. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about team and, and the people around you. Is there any particular directors, any actors, anyone that you'd um, particularly like to work with? Uh, so I got to work with one, Marie, which was uh, amazing. Um, currently, I'm working with a team that I absolutely love. Um, Steven Markovitz and Tamsin Ranger from Big World Cinema in South Africa. They are incredible people. They support such wonderful films. And so it's it's amazing to be able to work with them, knowing that I wanted to work with them for a long time. But I think, you know, like studio houses, like I would love to make an A24 film, like love love, love, love to be supported by A24. I think I have stories that I could tell that, you know, fit um, the, what their palette, you know, fit mm -hmm. what they intend to commission. Um, but other than that, these incredible directors um, and, and writers as well, like mm -hmm. our Aaron Sorkin, I absolutely love his yeah. work. I loved um, The West Wing. It was amazing. I would love to work with Ava DuVernay, who, um, you know, has done work with Oprah, and she tells stories um, about Black people and, you know, their cultures and some of their struggles. Um, but also it's to work with powerhouses like Viola Davis and Lupita Nyong'o, and to possibly even get a chance to make an Afrofuturistic film with Marvel um, yeah. Studios, for example. So, yeah, my, my my dreams are big and they're wild and you know step by step I, I know I'll get a chance to work with all these people yeah absolutely more more manifesting let's make it happen <laughs> perfect um so you've already worked with Disney so you um voiced an animated character um in Kaza Kazazi Moto um so obviously that's very different to on-screen acting theatre acting and um, so I guess how how has it affected your on-screen performance do you think are you more aware of your your voice and your your words um I think working on the animation really showed me the depth um 
of the well that I have where we pull out all these emotions. Because here's the thing, when you're on set doing a film, you have a co-star that you're acting with. And so mm -hmm. when you're delivering lines, there's someone you're bouncing off of and you're playing with. And so you, it's it's like a, like a channel that you've created between you and the other mm -hmm. person. But in animation, it's just you, the script, and you're in a booth in a studio by yourself. Mm -hmm. And you have to deliver your lines and pull from you know your emotions and your feelings because there's nobody on the other side <laughs> yeah. there's nobody responding there's nobody feeding you lines and so you really have to dig deep to be able to you know play an animated character and have her be believable and so I think for me it really showed me that you know, it's nice to have someone that you can bounce off with on screen. But even if I don't, just because of the animation that I did with Disney, I now know how how well how well actually I can act with so little. Yeah, um, yeah. But I I absolutely loved my character Shiro. Shiro represents God. Um, in in the film that I was in, and so she's torn between saving the people of earth who are destroying it and i think it was an ode to you know climate change and pollution and what's happening with plastics um while at the same time trying to make time for her daughter you know and and being a mother and so it was it was such a wonderful experience and to work with disney like yeah <laughs> very very that cool just, yeah that was just awesome it was just awesome amazing amazing so so talking about um stories and characters and obviously at Kissa we're all about telling women's stories and um, so if you could play like any real person in a film or a tv mm -hmm. series who whose story do you think you'd tell so I've always always been fascinated by Mekatilili Wamenza um, I, I don't think a, a lot of people know her, but if you're in Africa and for sure if you're Kenyan, I know you know the story of Mekati Lili. Um, she was a she was a fierce warrior of the Giriyama community from the coastal region of Kenya, which is ki kind of where I come from. And so, you know, she's part of my ancestry. And Mekati Lili was one of the first freedom fighters that we had. And she was opposing, you know, colonial rule and mobilizing people and using her voice. And, and she had, people described that she had this spiritual, supernatural power about her that when she stood and she spoke, she sort of like drew you in and pulled you in to her vision and what she felt. And I am completely in awe of this tiny lady who stood up and um, was a huge part of what we call the Giriyama uprising, where they really fought against colonialism. And it was because of her. You know, unfortunately, she was arrested by the British and she was exiled from her home in the coastal region to Kisi. But just her bravery the warrior that she was, the way she had a way with words, she was such a wonderful orator and that she had such a huge impact in our fight for independence. Mm. I would love to play her in a film. I would absolutely love to be Mekati Lili um, in this lifetime. She's, she's a hero. It yeah, sounds, yeah, it sounds like that needs to be a film, definitely. Any, any studios watching, that needs to happen, definitely, with Sheila. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so um, thinking about your own career so far um, in, in the film industry, obviously both on screen and behind the camera, um, what one piece of advice would you give to women looking to get into the space? Um, you know what, I'm going to offer a couple of pieces of advice because, you know, yeah, it's <laughs> the industry and we are women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the um, more the merrier. The more <laughs> Um, I think the first thing I would say is surround yourself with a supportive community. That's friends, that's family, people in the industry, people who can support you, who can give you advice, but also will be there to champion you and cheer you when you win and to mm -hmm. hold you, you know, when you're not winning. Um, I think the other thing I would tell um, this woman is have a voice and advocate for yourself advocate for better pay advocate for good uh, conditions on set because your mental sanity um being in a great mental space really allows you to write well allows you to perform your characters well will allow you to direct well so have a voice and advocate for yourself um but um i think finally i could say even if you're an actor 
it really pays to diversify your skills. Mm. I've seen actors who've done really well in writing and directing and producing. And so diversify your skill set and you'll have all that more opportunities at hand. And yeah. please advocate for yourself more than anything. Do not be afraid to speak up. Have yeah. the right people around you and diversify your skill sets. Perfect. Thank you. That's yeah, that's really great advice. Um, so can you tell us about any upcoming projects that you're working on? Well, yes, um, I'm actually pivoting um, from uh, being an actor and I'm now looking into directing. I have been Diversify. writing, I've been taking, <laughs> yes, I've been taking some incredible master classes and being um, trained and mentored by some of the best here in Africa. And so I'm, I'm leaping from just acting and now I'm moving into directing and writing. And so I'm currently working on a short film. It's set in futuristic Kenya and mm -hmm. it's about this lady who is wrongly accused of planning the murder of her mother-in-law and discovering that there is all these supernatural um, powers that are against her and mm -hmm. so I'm I yeah I'm really excited to make this film and yes. to have my directorial debut um, among others because I'm also working on another piece about um a woman who is wrongly imprisoned as well mm -hmm. and it's really about the justice system and how you know um how it really favors the rich and the poor don't don't really get justice if I could say so myself and yeah. it's about sisterhood it's about life in prison and it's about one woman's um, journey to fight for her freedom and to advocate for um, for a better judicial system for everyone amazing they, yeah both of those projects sounds great so I can't wait to to see them when they come to life thank you <laughs> Uh, so my final question, which I try and ask everybody, is who inspires you, whether that's in work or in life? Oh, gosh. Honestly, I think I, I'm I'm inspired by people and people is everyone. I, I From a young age, I was inspired by my mother. My mother, um, may she rest in peace, was absolutely brilliant. She was beautiful and she really taught me a lot about self-confidence and not being afraid to take up space and you know advocating for myself and actually knowing that I do belong um mm -hmm. I'm inspired by my grandmother who you know raised me after my mother died and seeing her strength and seeing her tenacity and seeing how a woman like age is honestly just a number because mm -hmm. the things that my grandmother does in her 70s just really <laughs> blows my mind and the fact that she got a chance to take care of me after losing her firstborn daughter and going through some form of depression herself but then she pushed through it and she was there for me absolutely inspiring um I'm inspired by even just my nanny the lady who helps me take care of my son mm -hmm. she is a diligent woman she does her work so well and she's a mother herself and to see that she sacrifices spending time with her children to come and help me take care of my son and how well she does her job and how humble she is mm -hmm. and the fact that she shows up every single day and loves on my child the way I would love on him yeah absolutely inspiring me and of course the women who are making films the women who are taking up space you know we have the uh, Malalas of the country we have the Michelle Obamas of the world um, we have the Oprahs of the world we have um, you know just all these women who are really taking up space and showing us younger women what it's like to just be brave and to be bold and to still be classy and feminine uh, as as you know you're accomplishing all these things mm. so honestly just inspired by people and their stories and their humanity and their love um, and just how strong and tenacious people can be is incredible and my son as well like he's so brilliant and he's so <laughs> smart and he's so cute and so <laughs> handsome and and um just to see um the kind of person he's growing up to be and that I have a part to play in that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely inspired. Perfect. Oh, well, what a lovely, lovely note to end on. Thank you so much for your time, Sheila. We really love speaking with you. Thank you, Cassie. And thank you for this opportunity to speak about myself. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs>